What's going on guys, Gabe here with Puppy Door again. Today is a little different. I do realize a lot of you guys are also YouTubers and so I wanted to share with you some of my workflows and processes in how to make video editing and video creation a whole lot easier. I am one for overkill. <laughs> I have to admit it, Apple Jacks, Apple Jacks. So what, what would you, what would you say about that? Just a little bit. I'm sure as a YouTuber like myself, not only do you fall in love with the video creative elements, but you also fall in love with the nuances of video creation, the tools. I know we're all guilty of it. We buy tool after tool. This is my Sony a7 III, and yes, I will be getting the new Sony that just came out, it's an absolute beast, but um, we have the camera, we have the mic, and I'm sure you've seen a lot of different tutorials on uh, getting the best image quality and getting the best audio quality, and this is a vlogger setup, as you guys can see, turn this around, and here we go, we're just vlogging. For a studio setup, and you guys know who you are. In fact, uh, I see a lot of YouTubers with talking head pieces. Um, some of my favorite YouTubers, such as um, your everyday dad or um, your average consumer, Peter McKinnon, talking head components. Um, those are what we find to be engaging. However, when we do these type of videos, there are a lot of hiccups. There are a lot of, uh, <laughs> we stumble on our words, we get lost in our ideas, so what you see on my table is called an ATM Mini. And we have the big brother, the ATM Broadcaster, which Apple Jacks uses to switch the video. So these videos are being switched in real time. And this is the little brother to that. So if you have a multi-cam setup where you're doing product tutorials or you're doing product reviews, something of that nature, and you want to highlight uh, the product from different angles. The ATM Mini, or the ATM Broadcaster, as you can see here, we get the overhead cam. Thank you, Apple Jack. See the power of switching. We have camera one, camera two, camera three, and camera four. And that's great. You're able to connect all of your cameras. And in the case of a Sony, we have a micro HDMI which connects to, as we can see here, thank you, Apple Jack. see, I'm telling you guys, the power of a switcher, we do this in real time. HDMI one, HDMI two, three, four, so on. It also has an HDMI out, so you can monitor what you're doing. So I actually have a monitor in front of me and I get to see which camera Apple Jacks is on. And this, again, helps us in the process of video creation. Now you don't need an assistant. I think an assistant's overkill. In fact, I think I'm paying way too much for what he does. But uh, hey, it is what it is. So we get into the overhead camera. I wanna show some things to you guys, right? So we're gonna segue into a cool trick or something that I uncovered and this is with Adobe Premiere. And I know some of you may use Final Cut Pro, some of you may even use Resolve, but we use Adobe Premiere in the studio. And what we uncovered is a new feature called scene detection. And what scene detection does is you bring your entire video into your timeline in Premiere Pro and it automatically detects the scene and makes the proper cuts. So if Apple Jacks were to hit the black screen right now, this is effectively telling Premiere Pro to make a cut because it has detected a scene change. Once it comes back on me, there will be another cut. Now you imagine the power in that. The power in that is that when you're editing your videos, which for me, which I'm sure for you, can be hours on end. Even for a 15 minute video, you're scrubbing through the timeline, you're looking for your bloopers, you're looking for your cuts, when to cut, where to cut, when you repeat it. And I also know a lot of you use the start stop method on your cameras for whenever you do make a mistake or you feel like your scene isn't up to par but then you gotta drop all that into your timeline and you gotta find the right take. 
Going back to the ATM Mini Pro, and this is why it's useful for you guys. Now, this model in particular costs $599. There is a $299 model, which does the exact same thing, except it doesn't have a preview element, meaning you're able to see all three of your cameras at the same time. You could just see the program live. So whatever camera you're on is what you're going to see on your monitor, which is absolutely fine. But a trick we figured out, and we're gonna jump into Premiere Pro and show you guys what uh, we're doing here, is for instance, even if you only have one camera, one main camera, you're just a talking head uh, YouTuber, kind of like myself, you have your main camera connected to one. And then two, three, and four are blank meaning if you were to press it, just like now, Applejax is gonna press a blank video feed. Now we have a black screen. Now he comes back to me and Adobe Premiere will find that and make that cut. Preparing for your YouTube videos and your talking uh, head points, yeah, that, that's something you need to do. That's something you must do. Obviously, you want to be knowledgeable of your product, but if you're recording a 10 minute video, it shouldn't take two or three hours to actually edit, scrub, edit, find your cuts, find your bloopers. I'm gonna show you guys in Premiere Pro right now how that works, so let's get right to it. Okay, so we're gonna jump right in. I'm gonna show you guys exactly what we mean. We actually are going to edit the last segment of the video. We're gonna do this live, we're gonna do this in real time. Applejax is sitting here to look pretty with his big hair and beard. Let's get right to it. All right guys, so if you subscribe to the Adobe Creative Suite, you want to open up your Creative Cloud desktop, and then you want to head on over to beta apps. And here we have Premiere Pro Beta. This is what we want. Once you install Premiere Pro Beta, it's going to install Media Encoder Beta. We want to talk about scene detection and how it automatically applies to cut. So we select the clip there and we want to select scene edit detection. Here, we select high sensitivity and also apply cuts to length audio tracks. Click OK. It's going to analyze the clip and once analyzed, it's going to automatically apply the cuts. And this is super important, especially when we have scenes where we turned off the camera. We do that on purpose, especially when we are going to reset the scene or reset our ideas um, and just uh, redo a particular segment. And I know a lot of you guys uh, deal with having to redo a scene after scene, saying the same thing over and over and just trying to get it right. So having that ability to switch over to a black screen and then redo your scene and then bring it into Adobe Premiere and then having the system automatically detect the cuts makes things a hell of a lot easier. We're gonna show you guys that in a second after it's done analyzing. Okay, so it's done, it's analyzing. As you can see, it has applied the cuts. And again, we have a cut where Applejack is talking, that cut's already applied. We do not have to scrub looking for errors based on audio. We can scrub looking for errors based on the black screen that we transition to. Applejacks understands that once we go to a black screen that we are restarting that scene and then it allows us to go ahead and jump through our video. Um, every scene change, every camera change, a cut is automatically applied. And so this is the benefit of having an ATM switcher or any type of HDMI switcher, which you can leave one of the feeds absolutely empty and you have this black screen. This would be your error button. And we're gonna go ahead and just scrub through the timeline. Again, we see another error and we see another error here. So let's say we want to delete that error and now we want to ripple delete. Now we have a perfect jump cut and with this jump cut, you guys can see there, we then take this cut here that you guys just saw and what we're going to do is scale it to 130. So it's the 30 degree rule um, where we zoom in so it doesn't seem like it's a jump but rather 
just a camera zoom so this helps with your videos being seamless okay so as you guys can see we have uh, overhead camera you guys can see all of this behind me and then there's actually a preview monitor back there that's what i'm looking at that's the power of the atm mini pro if you want to see a full review on the atm mini pro just let me know in the comment section below. I'll do my best to give you like the tips, tricks, and just some of the workflow secrets that I've come across with the ATM. But uh, yeah, I hope you guys learned something. I feel like with the ATM and Premiere Pro with the scene detection really improves the speed and helps you just charge through your workflow. So you're worrying more about your creative process as opposed to the editing. I know a lot of you are super creative, far more creative than I am. And then the editing just becomes a tedious bore. So this definitely speeds it up. In fact, we went from video shoot to final edit on this video in a little less than an hour. Anyways, this is Gabe with Puppy Dark. I'm signing out. Peace.